We're going out for approximately 10 days to do some uh, work with another submarine to make sure they're ready to go to sea. Uh, we have stationed the maneuvering watch and what that is is a special watch that we set that uh, we need additional personnel on hand so we can get underway safely. Uh, submarines are not as maneuverable as some of the other ships that uh, you're probably used to seeing. Uh, like I said, he's warming it up because uh, it's very cold and you put down the handles here and uh, be looking out here shortly. And what the guy there is doing, that's uh, Petty Officer Nicholas. He's a leading quartermaster on board. And the quartermasters are the people who do the math, maps on board and tell us where we can go. And uh, he's looking out number one periscope uh, to make sure we're safely going in the direction we need to go. The guy in the tanker with the uniforms, that's the Chief Waters. And uh, when you wear the blue shirts like uh, Pastor Nicholas is, and I'm, I am wearing, uh, you're what we call an enlisted personnel. Chief Waters was an enlisted personnel, but they're what we call a chief. And that guy in there is Mr. Oller, and he's an officer in the Navy. Officers are the people who have gone to college and have learned a, a little bit more, and I highly recommend any of you go to college. Now, you probably want to see me, and you'll be seeing me here shortly as soon as I get somebody to hold the camera for me. Well, I just want you to know I got all your Christmas cards and all your letters. I really appreciate them, and I'm going to try to write back every one of them. Now, what that guy's doing, he's on a radar. Yeah, I'm sure all of you know what a radar is, but if you don't, it's a radar transmitter. That uh, so we can see contacts around it, and that's the actual radar right there. Keep your load up. Huh? Uh, ship's alarm. It's a collision alarm. In case you hit somebody or have General alarm for detection. something happens to our power plant. And the diving alarm is right before we dive. We always sound that. What you're looking at in here is Central Computer Complex. Those are the two computers that run the fire control system, which is what I do on board. And this little two-door over here is how we talk to the computer. And I'm standing right next to this little gray thing here is a disk memory set, which is our disk drive, just like a regular computer. Cut it off! Stop whistle! Hear the whistle. Cut off air to the whistle! 
Okay, the guys you see here are the guys who actually drive the ship. Looks kind of like an air see the control sticks there. Control bridge, send the rubber hammer to the bridge. Bridge control, are we? It's in a bridge bag. Bridge control, send the bridge right, sir. That's the ballast control panel. You want to put the on the sack? Watch yes, messenger doing wake ups. Messenger's doing wake ups on it. Hey, inform personnel when you wake them up that the reason you can just pull that sheet out and just take the one sheet instead of the whole book. Alright. Inform people that uh, we're fixing to die of the ship and this would probably be the only time that you'd be able to come around and wake them up. Alright? And that's the reason that it's early also. Dive. Okay, it's uh, nighttime and we're getting close to our dive point. And uh, fairly shortly, uh, doing that dive thing. Hey, Beef, what are you doing? I'm recording you. For some kids in uh, Kentucky. Happy, happy, joy, joy. This is going to a fifth grade Why class in Kentucky. Bye, Pesh Horse. You want to explain torpedo room and torpedoes to a fifth grade class in Kentucky? I'm serious. Okay. Hi, I'm Pesh Horse. This is torpedo room. The USS Worcester. That's goofy, man. You know, it's not great. You got goofy. You got goofy. Go flow into it. Yeah, but I'll let it. I can sign it. I don't know anything. I didn't think it was goofy. Go ahead. I mean, what do you want? What's up? No, just be more natural, be more fluid. This is where we store the weapons. Unless otherwise. And uh, we launch the weapons, the launchers are over here on both sides. Mm -hmm. You can get Penny Officer Beaver yeah. to go over there and pan into an open tube, uh, but you can see what it looks like on the inside of the tube. Um, okay. The junior personnel on board end up uh, sleeping down here in the torpedo room in auxiliary berthing. Oh, yeah. All the fun stuff. Okay. This eliminates hot racking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, on, uh, on board the uh, USS Trepang, we carry Mark 48 torpedoes and harpoons, which is a sea skimming cruise missile used against uh, surface ships. Uh, Mark 48 torpedoes used against submerged targets, uh, submarines, and also ships. Okay, so this is a Mark 48 torpedo, right? Mark 48 torpedo right here. Right. How long is it? 21 feet long, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. 21, 21 inches, inches diameter, and, yeah, yeah, inches in diameter. and this little yellow striped area, that's the warhead area, and the little horizontal stripes you see there, and magnetic fields, and that sources, that senses the magnetic fields. And and that's the actual screw area down there. That's covered up. What are you standing on there, Hey, this is uh, this is actually inside a torpedo tube. Now, how do how do we uh, get a torpedo to come out of this tube? I don't see anything to pull it out. Works like a squirt gun for the officer Beaver. Uh, right here, I'm shining the spot, the light spot on what's called a slide valve. What that does connects to the impulse tank. We have another tank. It's called the the, pit, the water piston. Basically, the torpedo tubes work like a squirt gun, a giant squirt gun. <laughs> yeah. At the end down there is the door that leads out of the ship. That's where the, the weapons leave the ship. The door that we're looking through here will be closed. 
our water would be coming in the, the um, sub. How many G's of force does a torpedo get when it gets forced out of the submarine? Well, it needs a minimum of two G's. It gets about. It's about four. I, ours are four or five. Yeah. Our tubes are four or five. We got a pretty pretty powerful squirt gun, huh? Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Peter. It is. <laughs> But we carry torpedoes on top and torpedoes on the bottom row. Out there underneath that tarp is what we call a harpoon missile, which Pistol Force uh, described to you earlier. And it's a capsule that eventually uh, comes out of that capsule.
the lights a little bit? Huh? Can we change the lights for a little bit? Sorry. Are you sure you don't want any coffee? Yeah. I do. Oh, thank you. Who wants to help you all? Hang on. Yeah, let me check. Me. Does that help you all? One and three? Yeah, that's it. That's good. Well, I can't say that. We're talking about it. Are you guys done arguing over the topic? Huh? Great go, we're done. Well, we gotta be professional now. What are we doing? We're in school lesson. Oh, well. You can't say that either. You can't say that. Ready? <laughs> this is sonar controller. This is pretty much the eyes and the ears of the ship when we're submerged. Uh, we don't have any windows on board, so anytime we're submerged, we ship pretty much relies on us to tell what's out there. And we do that by listening all around us. The very front of the ship consists of a glass nose that has a big ball. And on that ball, there are over a thousand microphones that we use to listen all around us up and down. That's what the three of us are doing. We're just listening all around, making sure there's no surface ships above. Make coffee, should. too. <laughs> so we're drinking coffee. If we hey, should have to go to the surface, we want to make sure we know what's up there so we wouldn't hit it. And of course, other submarines or anything else of interest. Uh, oh, what the heck? A lot of times we track everything from whales and dolphins. We have a contact right now, but I thought it was a That's how we come from. Unless they just crank the NAU up. You know, so we had a STA transit break once and I went to progress and investigate. Uh, pretty much right there is what we do. We Look around, analyze, and keep a good handle on what's our ground is. That's all I got. Okay, bye.
Loran Charlie, which is a coastal navigation system, and we have a commercial Loran Charlie system. Now that system is also slated to uh, disappear with, uh, with the GPS coming full online. I don't know exactly when that's happening. Uh, other than that, uh, my job on board as the senior electronics technician is uh, to drive the ship. I stand watches as the chief of the watch, which controls water and ballast in the ship. And I also stand watches as the diving officer. The diving officer's job is to uh, control the ship, ship's depth, uh, as ordered by the officer of the deck. Commissioned officer. Another watch that I stand is when we're on the surface, the officer of the deck shifts his watch up to the bridge, the big sail area, and he's up there. So I'm down below and I'm using the periscopes to, uh, to look for contacts. And these contacts I report to the officer of the deck and that assists him to make sure that we uh, conduct safe navigation while we're on the surface. Did you do the uh, radar and a great movie man oh, himself? Okay. Also, uh, we have the radar system. That's another system of mine. We have a, a uh, military version of radar, which the, the uh, antenna is housed inside the cell. It's raised by hydraulics, and, and we use that to fix the ship. We also have a commercial backup system for this, a Furuno radar, which we use uh, when we're piloting. It's a very good small radar system for use for coastal navigation purposes. Uh, other functions that we have on board, we take care of the ship's movie library. We have about 500 movies on board that we uh, issue for the ship's entertainment purposes. And we take care of all the stereo equipment and uh, VCRs, TVs that go along with that system.
it's basically what you do here is it's, it's all ship's control and uh, trim of the ship can be controlled right here from this panel. Plus uh, ventilating the ship and, and uh, getting the ship to the surface or diving it. We're bringing water on and off right here in this panel. You pretty much control it all, huh? That's it. <laughs> in a nutshell. Mm. Well, explain, explain what your duties are. Okay. Good morning, everybody. My name is MS2 Oxygen, and right now I'm preparing uh, the late meal after dinner, what's known as mid rats. For basically everybody that has the midnight watch, that's why they call it mid rats. And uh, I'm just cutting up some sausage here for uh, a gravy that I make up of biscuits and gravy. That's a favorite of the food. Actually, it's a favorite of my own too. <laughs> but uh, that's all that's really going on. It's a mess in here right now, but it's not always like that. I'm just prepping the meal and we underway we feed four times breakfast, lunch, dinner, and mid rats. And I cover two of those meals. I cover mid rats at breakfast. And in the morning I get relieved and the other guy does lunch and dinner. So basically we're busy around the clock. So that's about all. Well, who's got the easier job, the uh, mid rats guy or the lunch guy? Well it depends. I mean actually it depends on the meal that you have. Sometimes, you know, dinner is, I'd say actually the guys that do dinner really has it a lot tougher because you have drills and everything going on during the day. And lunch, really lunch and dinner are the busiest meals to have. Because every more people are up during that time of the day than they are so during the uh, nighttime. So. so the normal watch rotation, how many people do you normally have to feed? Anywhere, underway, anywhere from 70. I'd say 60 to 70 people at a given time. So okay. It's pretty busy. Basic kitchen. Something else. I'll take a background here. Hey! That's about it. All right, Hello, Petty yeah. Officer Beaver. Be nice. Say, say, oh, hey, yeah. say hey, Miss Wagner. Hey, Miss Wagner. In Class 5C. Uh, so what do you do? What do you do, man? Well, I help with the I help the cooks keep everybody safe. How long do you do that? Well, my time is up in a few days, but usually it's 120 days, but I should be doing it for 45 days. So, is everybody that comes on board submarines do that? Yes, everybody on board of submarines will do that. We want steam one. We want